In the four months since explosions at a fertilizer facility shook the small town of West Texas to its core, shock waves have been felt across the country, here in Washington and even at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. As the scale of death and destruction has come into focus, Americans have been forced to ask themselves some very tough questions. Could a West type event happen here in my community? Do facilities with explosives or lethal chemicals that pose a risk to my family, my home, or my community? For most people, the likely response is maybe, followed by, well, I don't know, but surely my local fire chief does. Surely the federal government does, and they will keep my family safe. Unfortunately, the West facility explosion undermines that sense of comfort. The West firefighters heroically went in to do as they had been trained, fight a fire. But this was a chemical fire fueled by ammonium nitrate. In the end, 12 of these heroes lost their lives. And until these explosions, the Department of Homeland Security, the federal lead for chemical security, did not know that the West plant even existed. DHS administers the risk-based, performance-based CFATS program that requires facilities with threshold quantities of certain chemicals to submit information through the top screen process. DHS then performs a risk analysis to determine whether the plant should be regulated. Facilities that DHS determine to be high risk are required to do vulnerability assessments and site security plans. When I drafted the originating legislation, I envisioned a high level of collaboration between high risk tiered facilities and DHS inspectors to ensure that security practices would be tailored to actual vulnerabilities. I also envisioned that site security plan information would be shared with local first responders. Had that information sharing occurred in West Texas, some of the death and property damage could have been mitigated. Today, for CFATS to work, facilities have to pay attention to the Federal Register. For large operations that have Regulatory Affairs Department, that is probably not too difficult. Facilities that maintain membership in National Association, like the ones we'll hear from later today, also have access to this information. It is unaffiliated, usually small, so-called outliers that dot our nation's landscape that are of concern. Many of these facilities operate in areas where the only responders are volunteers who do not have the access to the kind of specialized training and resources that are necessary to respond to West-type explosions. As a congressman for a rural area and a former volunteer firefighter, I'm troubled by the prospect that thousands, maybe tens of thousands of these facilities operate under the radar screen. There needs to be a sense of urgency on this issue at all levels. Interagency coordination is essential between EPA, ATF, OSHA, uh, DHS, Coast Guard, and state regulators. There should be enough information available to identify those facilities that pose a risk. That information needs to be shared. The ne next challenge is to probably far more difficult, ensuring that DHS properly analyze the risk at facilities that provide information. GAO has told us that when it comes to assessing risk and assigning risk tiers, arguably the most essential aspect of the CFATS program, DHS analysis, is neither, neither reliable or consistent. To that point, the Blue Rhino propane, propane facility in Florida that just this week exploded, sending 200-foot fireballs into the night sky, was not determined by DHS to be high risk. But I believe that with a lot of work and a lot of smart people in the CFATS program, we can do better. 
That is why I joined my colleague on the Energy and Commerce Committee, Mr. Waxman, in calling on the President to bring together experts to tackle the fundamental issues. In response, I was pleased to see that pres the President established an interagency working group to collaborate on improving information sharing and chemical safety and security. Hopefully, this renewed focus will yield meaningful results. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back the balance of my time.